From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Monday, April 3rd, 2023. More evidence links 3CX supply chain attack to North Korean hacking group. The supply chain attack on the enterprise phone company 3CX used hacking code that exactly matches malware previously seen in attacks by a notorious North Korean group, according to new analysis. Sophos added more evidence on Friday to this attribution, saying that a shell code loader the attacker used has only previously been seen in incidents attributed to the Lazarus group. They continued, quote, It's clear the perpetrators were able to compromise the installation in a way that users unknowingly downloaded not only the original application, but also additional malicious code, end quote. The hackers secretly modified these apps, so they executed malicious commands in the background, downloading malware that allowed them to steal sensitive information from the web browsers on users' computers. Hackers exploiting WordPress Elementor Pro vulnerability, leaving millions of sites at risk. Unknown threat actors are actively exploiting a recently patched security vulnerability in the Elementor Pro website builder plugin for WordPress. The flaw, described as a case of broken access control, impacts versions 3.11.6 and earlier. It was addressed by the plugin maintainers in version 3.11.7 released on March 22nd. The premium plugin is estimated to be used on over 12 million sites. Successful exploitation of the high-severity flaw allows an authenticated attacker to complete a takeover of a WordPress site that has WooCommerce enabled. Dish slapped with multiple lawsuits after a ransomware cyberattack. Dish Network has been slapped with multiple class-action lawsuits after it suffered a ransomware incident that was behind the company's multi-day network outage. These class action lawsuits filed across different states allege that DISH, quote, overstated, end quote, its operational efficiency while having a deficient cybersecurity and IT infrastructure. The legal actions aimed to recover losses faced by DISH investors who were adversely affected by what has been dubbed a, quote, securities fraud, end quote. Lockbit announces leaked data stolen from the South Korean National Tax Service. On March 29th, the Lockbit ransomware gang announced the hack of the South Korean National Tax Service. The group added the South Korean agency to its Tor leak site and announced the release of stolen data by April 1st, in case the ransom was not paid. The National Tax Service, which is mainly in charge of the assessment and collection of internal taxes, was established as an external organization of the Ministry of Finance on March 3rd, 1966. At the time of this recording, the group has yet to publish the stolen data. However, if the hack was real, this data poses a severe risk to the privacy and security of South Korean citizens. And now, a word from our sponsor, Normalize. Normalize is a cloud data security platform that continuously discovers sensitive data and their access paths across your cloud environments. Normalize provides the ability to analyze, prioritize, and respond to data threats to prevent damaging data breaches. Their cloud-native platform manages data security posture and compliance by automatically tracking risks to sensitive data, visually showing teams who can access what, and quickly block unauthorized access or vulnerable points of attack. Discover, visualize, and secure your cloud data in minutes with Normalize Freemium. That's N-O-R-M-A-L-Y-Z-E dot A-I. Alien Fox malware targets API keys and secrets from AWS, Google, and Microsoft Cloud Services. A new comprehensive toolset called Alien Fox is being distributed on Telegram as a way for threat actors to harvest credentials from API keys and secrets from popular cloud service providers. Sentinel 1 calls this, quote, an unreported trend towards attacking more minimal cloud services unsuitable for crypto mining in order to enable and expand subsequent campaigns, end quote. The malware is described as highly modular and constantly evolving to accommodate new features and performance improvements. Primary use of Alien Fox is to enumerate misconfigured hosts via scanning platforms like Leak IX and Security Trails and subsequently leverage various scripts in the toolkit to extract credentials from configuration files exposed on the servers. Lewis and Clark College Cyberattack Claimed by Notorious Ransomware Gang 
The Vice Society Cybercrime Group has taken credit for the attack, posting samples of passports as well as documents that include social security numbers, insurance files, W-9 forms, contracts and more. Starting on March 3rd, the school sent out several urgent messages on social media and on its website, notifying students and employees that several of its systems were down. The outages lasted until March 7th. The Portland, Oregon Liberal Arts College did not respond to requests for comment about whether a ransom was demanded or will be paid. QNAP fixes pseudo-privilege escalation bug in NAS devices. Taiwanese vendor QNAP warns customers to update their network-attached storage devices to address a high-severity pseudo-privilege escalation vulnerability tracked as CVE-2023-22809. The vulnerability was discovered by security firm Synactive. It is a sudoers policy bypass in sudo version 1.9.12p1 when using sudo edit. An attacker can trigger the vulnerability to achieve privilege escalation by editing unauthorized files after appending arbitrary entries to the list of files to process. University student uses AI chatbot to get parking fine revoked. When Millie Holton received the notice from York City Council in the UK, she said she was tempted to pay rather than spend time compiling a response. However, the 22-year-old asked ChatGPT to please help me write a letter to the council. They gave me a parking ticket, and she sent it off. The authority withdrew the fine notice. Holton said the fine was wrongly issued for parking on her street as she has a permit to do so, but she had considered paying the fine simply because she was busy with academic work in the final year of her events and business management degree. We will not be holding a Super Cyber Friday discussion this week, but that doesn't mean you can't get great live content from the CISO series to close out your week. We have our regular Week in Review show on the books for 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on Friday. We'll be talking about the biggest headlines of the week with some expert commentary from a CISO guest. Go to CISOseries.com and click on the events page to register to join in the fun. We may even include your comments in the show. And if you're in New York City around April 13th, take note, we are going to have a live audience recording of the CISO Series podcast on April 13th. For more information on this and to register, head to our events page, also on CISOseries.com. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines. 